Linux is awesome. So many different distributions, a huge variety of desktop environments, and of course, the freedom to do literally anything with your PC without the need to worry of someone spying on your personal data and information. But many who are not familiar with Linux yet or didn't even know it until they heard it right now, the choice of a distribution or a desktop environment can be overwhelming. But don't worry, in this video you are going to learn everything you need to know about if you want to ditch Windows or Mac OS and use something much more unique. An operating system built by the community for the community. Before we jump in though, let me remind you to like the video and even subscribe to the channel. If you've already seen one of my other videos, then you're certainly interested. Alright, let's start off with the basics. Linux is an operating system which is mostly used on servers because it is very stable, fast and generally reliable to run many services on even lower end hardware that a Windows server would typically need. But while the use on servers is the most common way that Linux is known out there, there are also many other things it runs on. You own a Fire TV stick? Well, Fire OS is based on Android, which as of itself runs on Linux. Got a smart fridge with Wi-Fi? Chances are that it runs on some form of Linux as well. The PC market for companies or private use is by far the toughest one for Linux. With other choices like macOS, Windows or even Android, Linux and its open source nature didn't really have the resources to advertise itself and therefore is not really known along other operating systems. I mean, have you personally ever experienced walking into a store and buying a laptop with Linux as the default on it? Yeah, I thought so. But why should you even start using Linux? Well, as I said earlier, it is very stable, secure and fast. And that accounts for most of the most commonly known distributions like Ubuntu, Fedora, SUSE, Linux Mint and Manjaro. There are also some very stable distributions like Debian or some more unstable ones like Arch. And then there are the really beautiful ones, which not only serve as eye candy, but also provide a solid user interface by building sort of like a middle ground between the most common and, well, boring distros, while also maintaining good stability. But what does stability even mean? Well, it's not really about on how well a system runs if you don't touch it. Heck, most common distros will have a similar experience. What it really means is the way that updates happen. Arch, which is considered a more unstable distribution, has very frequent updates and it is more or less considered bleeding edge, while Debian only sees a new major release every couple of years, while only patching minor changes in the meantime. The difference here is the frequency in which a system can break, not must. Arch can break if you don't update it for a while, since dependencies can depend on others and the installation order can break a lot. On Debian, updates are tested way longer and more carefully, which is why it is considered stable. So, as long as you maintain your system as it is designed, then you are fine. But yeah, sometimes mistakes still can happen. Oh well, it happens on Windows as well. Alright, so let's start off by choosing our distribution. What I recommend you to do is not to follow any best distribution guide but by looking at what desktop environments are out there and which you prefer by the looks of it. But remember, you don't need to fixate on one specific one because Linux is not only about choice, it is also customizable. But anyway, here are some of my recommendations. If you like a well-designed and modern graphical user interface and you're coming from a Mac machine, then I would recommend a distribution like Endeavor, Sorin or Elementary OS. They look very nice, feature good usability, customization options and software stores so that you don't need to learn a terminal. Next up I'll show you the complete opposite and basically for the nerds. Debian, Arch and other base distributions you find on the wiki are very customizable, but they are not designed to hold the user's hand. If you don't know what you're doing, then you can break these operating systems quite easily. So let's take a look at the distributions that I would use personally which at the same time are the most popular desktop Linux distributions out there. Ubuntu is a great start into the Linux world. It looks nice, has a good update cycle and provides a huge set of different desktop environments. Just pick a flavor you like. Some other great distributions are Fedora, the one I'm using right now, Manjaro, Linux Mint, OpenSUSE, PopOS and many more. To be honest, you can look all of them up if you just google most common used Linux distributions. One more thing. If you are a gamer, then you should also check out Nobara, a fork of Fedora, 
made by Glorious Aggro, is known to squeeze out every tiny bit of performance on your system. Also, if you have an NVIDIA GPU, then you should also keep an eye out if a distribution already provides NVIDIA drivers out of the box. PopOS has its own image, and Nobara also supports it quite well. For the sake of this video, however, I'm going to choose a distribution that does not offer these things. Simply because I want to showcase that installing an NVIDIA driver is not that hard to do. So let's start off by creating a USB stick that contains our operating system. I'm going to install Fedora for this video, since it is a tiny bit harder than other distributions that I mentioned. Fedora also provides a custom tool for creating a bootable USB stick, but you can also use a different tool like Belina Etcher or Rufus. You can find operating system ISOs right on each distribution's homepage, and if they offer a media writer like Fedora, then you only need that one. By the way, you can also use the Fedora media writer for other distributions. So let's go ahead and download our ISO. After the download, let's start flashing our USB stick. We want to select our ISO file, click on next and select the ISO that we've downloaded and we're going to choose our USB stick and hit write. So now that our USB stick is ready, let's restart our PC and head into the UEFI. In order to get into the UEFI, there are three typical keys that this functionality is mapped to. F2, delete or F12. Try these options and see if you can get into a menu like this. Now head over to the boot menu and make sure that your USB stick is on top. After that we can save our changes and exit. After our restart we should see something like this. I would recommend that if your distribution has this option then make sure to test your media first. It's always nice to be safe. After your system booted up we'll end it right in our live boot environment. In here you can usually try out the distro before you install it if you're not sure if everything is going to work. Or you can just simply try to install it right away. The first thing we want to select is of course our language. I'm of course going to choose English and United States, because why not? Let's hit on continue. Now let's move on to a very important part, installation destination. If you want to dual boot, then make sure that you don't override your Windows partitions. However, most Linux distributions detect if Windows is already installed and ask you if you want to install it besides Windows. This little check mark indicates that my whole drive is being used. And after that, we can just hit done. And we're ready to go and begin our installation. After the installation process is finished, then on most distributions, your PC will restart automatically. On Fedora, we have to do it ourselves. After the reboot is finished, we can finally start with setting up Fedora. For more privacy, we can disable telemetry data quite easily, unlike other operating systems. Yeah, I'm looking at you, Windows. The next thing we want to do is to enable third-party repositories, since otherwise we couldn't install drivers like the NVIDIA GPU driver. Next up we can optionally connect our online accounts, but I'm just going to skip this. Now we can enter our credentials. Now let's choose a password. In Fedora you get feedback on if your password is strong enough. Pretty nice. And we're already done. Now we can simply start using Fedora, as we would usually. If you are on an AMD or Intel GPU, then the open source driver Mesa should already take care of getting your PC ready. But I still would recommend you to open up the software application and check for updates. One thing that you should remember when using Linux is that if you can download an application from a trusted repository, then you should do that instead of downloading it from the internet. You can also find the Nvidia driver right here. Now, you might notice that some apps like Discord or OBS cannot be found. This is because Flatpak installations are not ready yet. Now you don't necessarily need Flatpak to download Discord or OBS, but if a distribution like Fedora does not offer its own version in its own repository and doesn't have the Flatpak repo added by default, then you should follow these steps. Head over to Firefox or any other pre-installed browser, search for Flatpak Fedora and click on this link to download the Flathub repository file. After that, we can simply find it in our download folder and double click it to install the Flathub repo. Now, if you're using an Nvidia GPU, then you might want to open up the terminal and paste in these two NVIDIA installation lines. On Fedora, the installation of the NVIDIA driver does not contain all of the packages, which are needed for gaming, streaming and often other applications. These commands download the additional packages from the Fedora repository and install them. Be aware that you are being asked for your password here. This is because we are installing the packages with sudo. You can think of it of running something as an administrator. Also, a little note here. When you're entering your password here, you won't be able to see it. Don't worry, this is only a security measurement. Just type it in and hit enter. If some of your other devices won't work, then try the command sudo dmesg 
look for red lines. And if it is missing a driver, then try to install it with DNF, like previously. You can also search for it, if the install command did not work. And congratulations! You successfully installed your Linux operating system and are now ready to just download the applications or whatever you need. Go ahead, do your work, watch Netflix, YouTube or play a game, knowing that you have successfully freed yourself from Microsoft and Apple and are part of a very special community now. And I wish you good luck and fun on your journey. If you've enjoyed this video, then make sure to show it with a like and even a sub. I appreciate your support. And you should also check out this video if you want to learn more about Linux or myself in general. And all that's left to say now is good morning, good afternoon or good evening, wherever you are, I'll see you around.